Hi and welcome to my video. Um, here's uh, I just built a uh, a dual Xeon server workstation with an old Intel dual Xeon 1366 board that I got on eBay for around a hundred dollars and there's I'm running Windows 8.1 Professional and you can see that's showing all my 16 cores and 23.9 gigabytes of um, uh, dual RAM. Let's have a quick look here. So I'm just going to show you the type of RAM you need. It's ECC RAM. Uh, it's dual rank, 4 gigabytes of IBM, dual rank PC3, DDR3, 1333 RAM, and 6x4 uh, gigabytes. So 12 gigabytes per core, per, um, per quad core. And the chips are the two. SLB F5 Intel Xeon Quad Core X55 50s, which I got for $80.75 and $10.60 shipping. So that's what this puppy is, this new computer. And the case is a an aluminum case. It's a beautiful case. I love this case. It's um it's basically a Lee on Lee, but it's not a branded Lee on Lee. Lee Ann Lee, not it's not branded Lee Ann Lee, but it is a Lee Ann Lee case, and it's um, extended. Um, it's an extended board case, whatever that is. It's uh, extended ATX. So if you're if anybody is out there wants to build a server, um, I'll tell you the reason I rent. I got. Uh, Quad rank, I'll go through the reasons why I bought all the things that I bought for this computer. I did a bit of research. Dual rank, the reason I bought dual rank RAM is because with dual rank RAM it uses 100%. Uh, there was a chart, an Intel chart somewhere online and it showed that with dual rank RAM it uses 100% of the bandwidth for RAM. So that's why I went with dual rank RAM. So 24 gigs 12 gigs per um, chip. So 16 cores, as you can see, the CPU usage. Um, if you're going to build a server, you need to have uh, Windows Professional, or uh, I believe you have to have, you can't just use it with any Windows to build a server. You have to have uh, Windows Professional, I believe. Okay, so, and also, like I said, you need an extended ATX case. I have this Lee on Lee case. It was an excellent case for about $100. It's not Lee and Lee branded, but it's all aluminum. And I just really, it was a great case to build with. So, that's basically it. Um, it wasn't too hard to build with. Um, trying to think of the obstacles that I overcame. I had to reboot it several times to get it to load. And um, I'm just using one 500 gigabyte Western Digital disk drive, um, my old Plexter Blu ray drive. Um, let's see what else is in here. Um, I'm water cooling the two Xeons. So I'm using my old. EK Supreme HF copper block solid core and I'm using a brand new block that I got on eBay which is called a cis cooling block and basically um, I wasn't I didn't need the back plates that came with the two blocks because 
this motherboard. Um, let me give you the name of the Intel motherboard. Let me just find it for you. Okay. The board that I got here, I think I actually mentioned it before. Okay. Oh, here I have it here. Intel. It's a server board. It's the S5520. Um, it's one of those ones. One of these three. Intel server board S5520HC. Xeon server board. So that's pretty that's basically what it is. It's a huge manual. It's um, 190 pages. But it's not that bad. Um, when you install it, you have to basically, there's a header on the motherboard for the power switch. And it's all in the manual. And it has only one PCI Express slot and one PCI slot which I needed and it basically has nine RAM slots three RAM slots for one chip and six RAM slots for the other chip um, the other configurations of this motherboard have more RAM slots this is the one with the least RAM slots I believe so anyways the one of the trickiest things of water cooling this motherboard was that it's already got Foxconn labeled backplates for the CPUs so luckily four of the screws that came with one of my water blocks they were the same thread as the uh, screw holes in the Foxconn backplates on this motherboard so I was able to use two screws per block to put them in and I'm using the black norprene, um, which I really like, the black norprene tubing. And I'm using PC ice. And what else? Oh, I've got a um, thousand watt. Um, it's not a gold rated. It's just a basic thousand watt Cooler Master power supply. Um, and I have a basic copper. Um, brass and copper radiator which I'm ordered I have ordered a aluminum radiator on the way so I'm moving away from brass and copper and moving to an aluminum radiator the next one I got and it's actually a smaller one um, I have three water pumps I'm using the Swift Tech with an XP SPC block for this build and I have two other water pumps as well but I'm not using them and I have a crappy graphics card in here it's a NVIDIA Quadro 400 or 600 but it, it runs um, DirectX 11 which is the only good thing about it so yeah that's my build um, I really love this case it's like a Lee Ann Lee case it's not Lee Ann Lee but it's made by Lee Ann Lee uh, I, can't, I don't even know the name of it I'll have to figure it out but it's really great because the it's extended ATX, that's why the case is so long, you can see it's huge. Um, and um, the whole motherboard can slide out. Um, so yeah, that's really, um, so I'm happy so far because I just installed, um, I just installed everything. Oh, and the, and the other difference is I'm using, instead of using a reservoir in this build, um, I'm using a fill port. So I just used a fill port and, and a long piece of tubing. And that was it. Simpler design. I don't like, I'm glad I'm getting away from using the reservoir because it's just another clutter, more clutter. So yeah, that's my build. Uh, any comments or questions? I know I haven't posted anything for a long time, so yeah, any questions about building it? I'm sure there's probably stuff that I have not mentioned, but uh, yeah, let me know 
what you think. Cheers.